What is up, my friends? You are very welcome along. The good news, we've gotten through the international break. We can start to look ahead to the weekend now, and we know how we are fixed with players coming back from injury. But, of course, we still have the Andy Robertson injury scare, and I will be discussing that in tonight's video. If you're watching this early enough in the day, it is Wednesday. Just a reminder, we'll be live tonight at half eight as well. But over the next eight to ten minutes, I'm going to take you through the injury scare for Andy Robertson, Liverpool's search for a manager, and why Florian Plettenberg is the gift that just keeps on giving. A little bit on why Lucho's dad needs to keep it buttoned, and a couple of other bits and pieces. As always, though, we want to know your thoughts, so let us know in the comments section. Drop a like on the video if you enjoy it, but most importantly, my friends, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So I'm going to start off today with Liverpool's owners and their search or their, their pathway into the multi-club ownership model. Now, there's a lot of talk during the rounds of the last 24, 48 hours that they're interested in a French club Toulouse. That has been put to bed today by Dave Powell, who said, contrary to some reports, FSG are not looking at acquiring Toulouse, no talks held and none planned. Now, we know Michael Edwards was brought in not only to oversee the managerial search at Liverpool, to put in a sporting director, but also to help FSG navigate their way to uh, acquiring another club. I don't think France is going to be the right place for it. Portugal is probably where the smart money is, but as and when we have more concrete information on that, we will, of course, bring it to you. Just wanted to let you know that it won't be to lose. Dave Pell knows what he's speaking about, and I believe what he says, no talks planned either, so I think we can rule to lose out. Who it will be, I guess time will tell on that one. Any suggestions, by the way, love to hear them in the comments section. Uh, there's a good piece on The Athletic about this, though, that breaks down the pluses and minuses to buying clubs at certain levels of the development. So you don't want to buy a club that's too big, you don't want to buy a club that's too small, you want to get one that fulfills what you want to do so if it's a pathway through for other players then you've got to get a club that can do that so it is going to be an interesting process but we have more concrete information we'll let you know with regard to the managerial search well this isn't really Liverpool related but it is Florian Plettenberg related which to me is the gift that keeps on giving so this is what Mr Plettenberg has had to say today Roberto De Zerbi top candidate for FC Bayern in case Xabi Alonso isn't available it just never stops. So Alonso is pretty much in the bag, according to the, to Plettenberg, if he leaves Leverkusen. I know that's not the case. Most of the world knows that's not the case. But Plettenberg loves to keep digging this hole for himself. And don't worry, Florian. I'm waiting. If we get Alonso, or when we get Alonso, the fun's going to start, my friend. I promise you. But he also said the Zerbi is aware of Bayern's interest, but is currently fully focused on the season finale with Brighton. That's why he's not in negotiations with any other club either. Not with Bayern, not with Barcelona, not with anybody. But he is their top of the priority list. Top of the second place list, I should say. He's the best of the rest. He's the one that they really, really want. Apart from the one that they really, really want. And that was also apart from the other four or five managers he's mentioned. But look, we'll wait and see how it all plays out. For me, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing Florian's fall from grace when it's shown that he's very, very wrong. Now, the big worrying story over the last 24 hours, though, has been Andy Robertson. You guys are probably aware, but he went off injured uh, in the game against Northern Ireland. A game in which Conor Bradley scored the winning goal, by the way. So congratulations, Mr. Bradley, on that one. But Robbo went off, I think it was around the 36, 37 minute mark, with uh, an ankle injury. Now, there is some decent news here, but we don't know the full extent yet. So... James Pearce said that Andy Robertson will return to Liverpool to undergo a scan after damaging his ankle. But there's been an update since. Chris Bascom has said Andy Robertson underwent a scan on his ankle on Merseyside today with the hope that the injury sustained against Northern Ireland is only a minor one. With the hope. So we still don't know. And that's the honest answer here. Um, I don't know what to expect here either it just feels like we're a little bit jinxed on international breaks and particularly Andy Robertson's having an unlucky season but the good news is I guess we've got Costas we've got Joe we've got options to cover on the left hand side but fingers crossed it is minor for Robbo and we have him back soon some other injury updates that I wanted to bring to you uh, it looks as though Curtis Jones could be available for the Brighton game at the weekend he's close enough uh, other ones Trent and Diogo Jota is expected to be back for the Manchester United game on April 7th uh, confirmation that we hope Stefan Bocetic will be back at some point in April. No exact date was given on the information we got. Uh, and the other stuff, nobody knows the day for Alison Becker yet either. So other than Matip and Thiago, that is pretty much where we are at with the injury updates. A little bit more though to go today because we want to talk about Lucho and Lucho's papa for a second. Now obviously, 
all of us are delighted that Papa Lucho is back with his family safe and well. But I wish he'd shut up talking because he was at it once again, my friends, and he was talking about his son and he was talking about a potential move over to Spain. Uh, let me read through what he said. So Lucho's dad was speaking and he said, when asked about supposed interest from Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid when the Reds signed his son in January, he said, uh, the truth is, I don't have any knowledge that there was something positive from the Madrid clubs. I heard comments and things, but I never knew that there was something positive. The Liverpool directive was more precise so Luis could join them. It was hoped that he could join a club here is in Spain because that's where he's doing this interview but it hasn't happened yet uh, all hope is not lost though we hope he can go to Spain because he's still playing and the Spanish clubs are still active this really winds me up and I'm sure winds many of you guys up as well his son is at one of the biggest clubs in the world and doing pretty well yes his form recently has been a little bit up and down but his dad needs to stop because all his dad is doing here is alienating some Liverpool fans well, nobody likes to hear that a player at the club doesn't feel like this is the be-all and end-all for them. Now, I'm aware uh, South American players, a lot of them do look towards Spain, similar culture, similar uh, climate and an attractive place to go and play football. But keep your mouth shut. Your son's at Liverpool Football Club and Liverpool Football Club have been incredible to Lucho and his family, bringing his dad and the family over so they could spend the Christmas period together in Liverpool, inviting them to every game. We've seen them celebrating Lucho's goals. This is just one that leaves a sour taste in the mouth for many of us. And I guess we'll only add to the speculation about Luis Diaz's future in the summer. If we bring a manager in that doesn't play with wingers, well, if it comes down to a decision between Lucho and Salah getting sold, everybody was going to say Lucho's the more realistic one because Salah's a god for Liverpool fans. So for me, I don't want to go too hard on him because of everything the family have been through. But he must know that his words are having... Um, a negative impact on how a lot of people view the situation with his son. And we don't like to think of Liverpool as a stepping stone for anybody, be it Lucho Diaz or anybody else. So if his son wants to move away, then I guess the club will make that happen if they get a reasonable offer. And with that being said, I guess the question I have for you guys is, what is a reasonable offer? What would tempt you if you were Liverpool into selling Lucho if an offer came in from Spain? Uh, for me, I don't think Lucho is somebody that is irreplaceable. I don't want to, him to leave, but if he does, I won't lose a minute's sleep over it. Uh, we've always been good at finding replacements, and if he doesn't want to be here like anybody else, if a right offer comes in, let them move on. So that's pretty much it for me today, my friends, but we will have more detailed information on tonight's live stream. So if you are around a half past eight, love to see you. And then we'll be building up from Thursday right through now with uh, a look ahead to the weekend where we've got a massive day on Sunday. We're going to take you right through for our game against Brighton and continue all the way through for a watch along of Manchester City versus Arsenal. And fingers crossed, by the end of play on Sunday, Liverpool will be top of the Premier League table. Then it's over to you guys. Let us know your thoughts. Again, hope to see you tonight. Thank you so much for watching don't forget to drop a like and hit the subscribe button and we will have some information on some Anfield Agenda live shows being announced very soon talk to you soon my friends bye bye